Good evening, everybody, and welcome to Study with Brother Don. I'm Brother Don, and it's good to be with you today. And we here in East Texas, we getting hammered again. The weather's just is just pouring down outside, and thunder and lightning. And uh, if you're wondering about uh, last week, uh, I did not upload last week, and the reason being is we were out of town, and uh, we were staying at a, a lake house on a. a I like to fish. We took a little trip. But anyway, one of the, these storms we've been having, uh, they came through last week, last Thursday, just about supper time. And uh, not only was the weather bad and we lost internet connection and stuff like that, but we lost power. We were without power for a while there. And uh, just, it, I, I couldn't upload. So, and then, uh, we didn't come back home till Saturday, so anyway, that that's why there was not a uh, a teaching last week. But I'm back this week amid the weather, so uh, and it's it's bad. And um, in Houston, they're having some bad storms, and and just all over East Texas. So so this time, I'm asking everybody to pray for us and pray for our area here with all this weather and stuff. Before we get into the um, into the study tonight. Just uh, just a few minutes, just uh, two things off of the news. Uh, I got this uh, yesterday, or the day before yesterday, actually. And uh, the House Congress is trying to pass a bill, and they're calling it the Israel Security Assistance Support Act. And what it is, is, is they're trying to keep Biden from not giving Israel weapons and support. You remember he told him he withheld a couple of shipments of, of weapons uh, because uh, he didn't want them to go into Rafa. And he told him, you know, if you go into Rafa, I'm not going to give you these weapons. And he didn't give them the weapons, although eventually they did get them and they did go into Rafa. And so Congress is trying to pass a bill where he can't do that. And Biden has said that he strongly opposes the bill and he will veto it if it comes across his desk. So the closer and closer we get to the elections, the more and more he's turning against Israel. And then the only other thing I wanted to share with you is um, uh, Israel has gone into Rafah. They're, they're fighting there now, and uh, which Israel says is the last stronghold of uh, Hamas. Even though Hamas in northern Gaza, they have, they're fighting again in northern Gaza because Hamas has kind of regrouped, if you would, in northern Gaza and there's more fighting. But the deal now is is, is with uh, Hezbollah in Lebanon. And Hezbollah has, has really upped their attacks on Israel. And uh, there were uh, some soldiers, uh, several soldiers were hurt, one seriously and uh, it just it just keeps on and on on in the north with Hezbollah. So probably it won't be long till we see a full scale war up north too with, with against Hezbollah. I, I can't see Israel setting back and not uh, not moving against them because of everything that's happening. The rest of the news is basically the same. The world is still against Israel. They're still screaming for a two state solution. And uh, it just, it's just going to get worse. It's going to stay that way, probably until Antichrist. And Antichrist, when he comes, uh, Daniel chapter 9 is going to bring the seven-year peace treaty into the Middle East. So that's, uh, that's what we're looking for. We're looking for all of these things that, that just keep snowballing toward the tribulation period and all the signs that the Lord gives for the tribulation Okay, enough of the news. Uh, we need to be praying for Israel because uh, I, God's going to protect them. I mean, I, I, my understanding, I don't see Israel losing another war between now and, and then uh, because of prophecy. But it, it's going to get harder on them and it's going to get worse. Okay, for the last couple of weeks now, uh, excluding last week when I didn't upload, but we've been looking at, at the things in the end time during the day of the Lord, the good things, in particular things about you and me, things that are going 
to uh, apply to you and me. And we talked about the rapture. We talked about the uh, Bema seed of Christ. We talked about the marriage supper of the Lamb. We've talked about the the millennial reign, the second coming, and then the millennial reign. And and we looked at many of the classic verses about the millennial reign. And tonight I want to talk about for a few minutes what it is that we, you and I, the children of God, what we will do during the millennial reign. And the reason why, last week we looked at Jesus ruling with the rod of iron. And the reason why that this is important as to what we will be doing is because it, it ties into what Jesus is doing, what the scripture says about him, that he will rule and reign for a thousand years. And then as we looked at last week, he will rule with a rod of iron. And we looked at why he would need to rule with the rod of iron. So if you uh, missed that or, or don't understand that, then you need to go back uh, two weeks ago and on my YouTube channel or on Facebook and, and look at the teaching, Jesus ruling with the rod and I, rod of iron. And and I explained that there. So what will we be doing? Okay, well, the first, the first thing to answer that is we need to remember that the millennial reign is not about you and me, the 1,000-year reign. We will be there and we will participate, but it is not about us. It's about Israel. It's about the Lord Jesus Christ and him with the nation Israel and fulfilling many of the promises and, and, and the covenant that he made with them back in the Old Testament with Abraham that's what the millennial is really about. So it's not about you and me, but we will be there and we will be a part of it. Now, you remember uh, two weeks ago in the teaching on the rod of iron, one of the things that I pointed out is that there are going to be a lot of lost people that will be in the millennial reign. A lot of people that don't know Christ and this is obvious because at the end of the millennial reign, which we're going to read about here in just a few minutes, Satan is going to be loosed from the, the pit that he's been chained in and bound in for a thousand years. And he's going to be loosed for a little season. Let me just read it, okay? Because this is our first verse anyway, Revelation chapter 20. And I'm going to begin reading verse one and read through verse six. And this is one of the the main teachings in scripture about the thousand years, the millennial reign. It says, Then I saw an angel coming down from heaven, holding the key to the abyss and a great chain in his hand. And he seized the dragon, that ancient serpent who is the devil and Satan, and he bound him for a thousand years. And he threw him into the abyss, closed it, and put a seal on it so that he would no longer deceive the nations until the thousand years are completed. After that, he must be released for a short time. Then I saw thrones and people seated on them who were given authority to judge. So there's your first clue. We've been given authority to judge. Now, at least these have. And these are the tribulation saints, the people that were martyred during the tribulation. And he said, I also saw the souls of those who had been beheaded because of their testimony about Jesus and because of the word of God and who had not worshiped the beast or his image and who had not received or accepted the mark on their foreheads or their hands. They came to life and they reigned with Christ a thousand years. The rest of the dead did not come to life until the thousand years were completed. This is the first resurrection. Blessed and holy is the one who shares in the first resurrection. The second death has no power over them, but they will be priests of God and of Christ, and they will reign with him for a thousand years. So there's there's really two clues in here. We're going to be there, and then all of these that have died during the tribulation period. As, as they're described here, they refused the mark of the beast. They wouldn't worship the beast. They chose rather to seek God and to worship him. And as a result, they were martyred. But the Bible tells us a little bit earlier in Revelation that they were beheaded uh, because they would not accept the mark of the beast. What does it say about them? It says, number one, they were given authority to judge, verse 4. And then it says in verse 6, they will reign with him for a thousand years. 
So I, I believe that part of our responsibility during the thousand years, the millennial reign of Christ, I believe part of it, as he says here, we're going to judge the nations. We're going to be in places of authority over all of the nations and the peoples of the world, and they will reign with him. And again, that ties into to being an authority over all the nations. And I, we're going to do stuff like I think we will meet out judgment, make sure things go the way that Christ says they are supposed to go, because the world is going to be ruled by righteousness during this time, not like it is today not by corrupt governments and, and people who only get into government to better themselves and to get rich for power, not like that. It's going to be ruled with righteousness. The right thing is going to be done during the millennial period, and we will reign with Christ for a thousand years. And so maybe part of our reward will be what we rule and reign over. How big of a, a, a area do you get? You know, how many people are you over? Those kind of things. But I think also that part of our teaching is going to be that we are going to teach people about Jesus. Because remember, there's going to be a lot of people that are not born again. And all through the millennial, people, they're going to have, be having babies. I mean, there's got to be a lot of people in the millennial, because Satan's got to be able at the end of the millennium to, to deceive enough people that he thinks he has a big enough army to come against Christ. So part of our duty will be to teach people about Jesus. You remember in Zechariah chapter 14, beginning in verse 16, it talks about that, that once a year we'll, we'll all go to Jerusalem and, 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 and celebrate the Feast of Tabernacles or the Feast of, of, of Booth Shelters. And there will be some sacrifice during that time period, certain sacrifices. You can read about that in Ezekiel 35 on to the end of the book of Ezekiel. And part of our duty will be to explain to people why this is happening and, and why Jesus is who he is and how he paid the price for our sins. And if they don't submit to him, if they don't come to him as Lord and Savior, that they'll die in their sin and they'll go to hell. And so that's going to be part of our deal. We're going to be ruling and reigning. We're going to be over all of these people, but we're going to be a kingdom, as it says, of priest also to our God and to Jesus Christ. So we will have the opportunity to teach people. So, I'm, you know, that, that kind of excites me because now me being a, a preacher and a teacher, I'll get to keep preaching and teaching during the millennial. I'll get to keep sharing the word of God that I love so much with those during the millennial reign and, and try to bring them to Christ also. And then another passage, Revelation chapter 5, verses 9 and 10. And uh, we'll back up to verse 8 to add into the context. Revelation chapter 5, beginning in verse 8. He said, And when he took the scroll, the four living creatures of the, and the 24 elders fell down before the Lamb. Each one had a harp, golden bowls filled with incense, which are the prayers of the saints. And they sang a new song. You are worthy to take the scroll and to open its seals because you were slaughtered and you purchased a redeemed people for our God by your blood from every tribe and language and people and nation. And you made them a kingdom. You made them kings and priests to our God and they will reign with him on earth. So again, we're going to reign with Christ on earth. Now, this passage points out the, the two phases of it. We will be kings, but we will also be priests. And I believe as kings, we will rule. We will have authority. We, again, there's going to be a lot of lost people. And I showed you some passages a couple of weeks ago that talks about in particular Zechariah chapter 14 and a couple of others that, that if if a nation or if a group of people decide, hey, I'm not going to Jerusalem, I'm not going to worship the Lord, and then he lists some things that are going to happen as is they won't receive any rain for their crops, things of that nature. So 
we will be those that will rule over these people and we will teach them the things of Christ. Now, remember something about this and about salvation and about teaching people about Christ. You and I, even though we're anointed with the Holy Spirit, even though we have the Holy Spirit indwelling us and hopefully we're full of the Holy Spirit and walking in the power of the Holy Spirit, we are not the Holy Spirit. In other words, when I preach the gospel of Jesus Christ, I can't make people get saved. I can't make people repent. As bad as I want to sometime, I can't. I'm not the Holy Spirit. I am a vessel for the Holy Spirit to work through just as you are when you teach somebody, when you witness, when you share the gospel with them, you are a vessel for the Holy Spirit to work through, but we're not the Holy Spirit. And so even though we're going to be ruling and reigning with Christ, we can't make them receive Jesus Christ. Only the Holy Spirit can, and he won't make them. He will draw them. He will woo them, convict them, but he won't make them. And when we get in the millennial reign, it's not going to change. Christ is not going to make them receive him, but he will do everything he can for the gospel to be presented to them in power and in spirit. So that's part of why we're going to have to rule as kings, and that's why we're going to have to preach as priests, share the gospel of Jesus Christ with them. So I want to share with you one more verse, if you would, Revelation chapter 2, and uh, this is pretty interesting. And uh, it begins, uh, this is the letter to the church at Thyatira of the seven letters that John uh, wrote in chapter two and three to the churches. And in chapter two, beginning in verse 26, listen to what he says. He says, the one who conquers and who keeps my works to the end, I will give him authority over nations. Now this is to the church. This is not like what we read in Revelation 20, which I believe Revelation 20 applies to us also, but that was particularly those that had come out of the tribulation that had died during the tribulation and then had been resurrected to rule and reign with Christ for a thousand years. But here he's talking to the church, you and me. And so he says, to the one who conquers and who keeps my works to the end, I will give him authority over nations. Now listen to what he says in verse 27. And he will rule them with an iron scepter and he will shatter them like pottery, just as I have received this from my father. I will also give him the morning star. Let anyone who has ears to hear, listen to what the spirit says to the churches. So he tells us that he's going to give us authority over nations, kings, rule and reign. And then he quotes a passage that is from the book of Psalms that is specifically for him. It's a passage that is, is Psalm chapter two, a messianic Psalm that is applied to Jesus Christ. But then he quotes it, Jesus does, and applies it to you and me. And he says that I will give you authority over the nations. And then he quotes and you will rule them with a rod of iron and shatter them like pottery. So we will have some authority. We will rule and reign with Christ. And I think all of this is going to be based on, back to uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 10 through 16, the Bema Seed of Christ, part of our rewards. The more faithful we have been, the more will rule and reign, the more authority we'll have, the more area we'll have possibly. Uh, remember the parable that Jesus did of the talents and he gave the, uh, in, in one it's 10, five and three and another it's five, two and one or something. I don't remember exactly. This just came to my mind. And the one that had the most talents, he went and he made more, more money. 
And when his master came back, he said, you know, you're, you're a faithful servant. So here, you're going to be over much. You're going to rule over a bunch of stuff. The one that only had, say, two, uh, two talents, two pieces of money, he made two pieces. The Lord said, here, you've been faithful. You're going to rule over some people too. The one who had one, he went and hit it in the ground. He gave it back to the Lord. And he said, you know, I, I, I just hit it. And the Lord said, you've been unfaithful and you're not going to rule. Matter of fact, take away what he's got and give it to the other one. So I believe that, that the area, the, the authority we have, the area that we rule and reign over, the amount of people we get the opportunity to teach the gospel to is going to be dependent on what we do here and now. Are we faithful stewards to what God has given us here and now? So for the millennial reign, it is my belief that there will be a literal 1,000-year reign on earth, and Jesus Christ himself will rule and reign from Jerusalem, and we will rule under him. We will be his, his servants, his, his right hand, if you would, throughout all the world. You say, well, couldn't Jesus do that? by? Yeah, he could. He could do it by himself. He could do everything by himself, but he chooses not to. He chooses to allow you and me to be a part of the kingdom, to work with him, to serve him, and to share in his glory, as he says. Remember, Paul said, I reckon that the sufferings that we endure here in this age are not worthy to be compared with the glory that shall be revealed in us. So I believe that when Jesus comes back, Zechariah chapter 14, Revelation chapter 19, going to destroy Israel's enemies, deliver, rescue Israel. They will be saved. They will participate in the new covenant at that point, Zechariah chapter 12, verse 10. And then he will establish his kingdom on earth. It will be a literal physical kingdom for a thousand years and we will be a part of it. Amen. I kind of look forward to that. I'm still going to get to preach and teach the word of God. I'm still going to get to serve the Lord and witness to people and share the blessing and the grace that we have in Jesus Christ with those that don't know him. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Thank you for being with me today. Uh, just one more real quick thing. I'm not going to elaborate on it. Uh, I just, I'm on, I need your prayers. Um, I have, um, I went to the doctor for my regular checkup here a couple of weeks ago, blood work, all of those kind of things. And some of it, let's just say it was a little out of whack. Okay. And, uh, <laughs> and, uh, I'm, I'm having to deal with some things. So if you would pray for me, I, I need your prayers. Remember to pray for each other because we are all brothers and sisters in Christ and we are all working here and now for the kingdom of Jesus Christ in preparation for what we have read and studied tonight for the kingdom where we will rule and reign with Christ. Amen. God bless you and thank you for being with me.